It's the SeaWorld Splash Podcast, bringing you the latest news, rumors, and history from the SeaWorld Parks in Orlando, San Antonio, and San Diego. And now, here are your hosts, Joseph and Sheldon. Hello, and welcome to the SeaWorld Splash Podcast, episode... Lord knows. <laughs> Let's just call this the... The summer episode. Summer episode, yes. I'm your host, Joseph, along with Sheldon. What's up, y'all? By the way, we're in the same place for once. I know. Isn't that weird? Well, I wouldn't say weird, but more coincidental. I know. Just kidding. It was planned. (laughs) Anyways, today we will be talking about Orca Encounter. The Orca Encounter presentation, I should say. Ocean Explorer at SeaWorld San Diego. Electric Ocean at SeaWorld in general, <laughs> Kasaka Update, Kubobo's Calf, my Florida vacation, which I'm on at the moment as we are recording this episode. And a special surprise about that. And so much more. So let's put on those ponchos and get ready to be drenched. Which we were, by the way, in Florida. Yes. <laughs> For all you got here in Florida. So, first up, Orc Encounter. My thoughts on Orc Encounter. Amazing presentation. If you have not checked out the video I was in for that, go check it out because I do give my honest opinion because that is an amazing presentation and I definitely think it'll be an amazing presentation for years to come. And I love how they added the backdrop and it looks like a bigger whale tail. What's your thoughts on Orca Encounter? Well, of course I haven't seen it yet, but it looks pretty cool. The music's really nice. Um, I really like that blue whale um, they use in the comparison. I really like the life size and like the colors. I um, kind of wish they had like a nighttime version of it, but I know it's still in its first uh, stages. But I think it has some pretty good room to grow. Otherwise, a pretty cool show. I like seeing all the whales participate in there, and they, they have a pretty good time with it. I know, it's really cool to see the life-size comparison of the blue whale. Very much so. I know Orlando and Ocean Discoveries, they have their screens split all the way across from one end to the other end. Of the yeah, world, that really doesn't give like an accurate No, this one actually does yeah. give you a legit, legit size. I mean, I know a lot of people never see the blue whale in person, but you got the biggest animal on Earth, it's hard to fit in a screen. but. Somehow, Seymour managed to do it. Oh yeah, they definitely did. Now on to Ocean Explorer in San Diego. My thoughts on that? <laughs> if you're going to take your kids on submarine quest, just be ready to spend an hour in line. As in any new ride, as you all might know, <coughs> Antarctica. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's just say that ride is enjoyable for children, just not for adults. So, if you have any young kids, take them on that. I recommend Turtle Trek. Not just me. I know, Turtle Trek is amazing. (laughs) Get emotional on it. (laughs) We'll talk about that a little later. Yeah. Now on to electric ocean events, such as Sea Lines Tonight. What did you think about that, by the way? That was extremely funny in Orlando. The, of course, the mime was I know. There, he was hilarious. And I love the mime. I like how we um, took this lady's phone and kind of <laughs> dropped it into the water. I know. I thought it was a real phone. And then he's like, tricked you. I thought it was a real phone. I'm like, is that phone okay? <laughs> and of course, they're cracking Unleashed skit. I know. That was funny. <laughs> they had legit... Well, not... <laughs> they had modified um, virtual simulator glasses, you could say. That was funny. <laughs> Uh, we'll call it that. Yeah. But it was pretty funny how they... I like. They really liked it. I think they really get to that show a little too much, but they love it. <laughs> and by the way, some of these things, or some of the videos from this, will be uploaded later, and so will the photos. Plenty of photos, and definitely plenty of videos. Yes, and photos from... Er, and photos with me and our co-host Sheldon over here. Yes, you can only see me and, them, me and him together. It's been, what, 
ages. <laughs> yeah, so we'll definitely have those coming soon. And let's not forget Lie of the Night. We did. I know, that was well. awesome. For those, yes, I know it's not up there in San Diego. I'm terribly sorry, but in Orlando, it's still here. And it was pretty awesome. My girl Katina got some serious air. I know, she did get truck, really good air. As usual. And triple front flip and all six whales did a really good job. Of course, we did see some pilot whales, but they're not going to be in the shows right now. We'll talk about that later yeah. on Joseph's trip. But a cool show still. Uh, the fireworks weren't actually in that show. I know. They're now just in the Electric Ocean um, Bayside yeah. Theater. The Bayside uh, Theater. But still, I like it. I, say, I like it. We have, oh, by the way, there is a female DJ. Two yes. female DJs. Two female now. DJs in Light Up the Night. Whoa. Apparently, the um, the male DJ trainers did, uh, sorry, DJs. The male DJs didn't want to come back. Yeah, so we have some females right now. For, yeah. I mean, they did actually pretty good, though. They actually were still very energized and... Shoot, pretty cool actually. I like a little mix of every now and then. I know. And yes, she did the rap pretty, pretty well. <laughs> and glow in the night part. It was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Definitely. And I'm sure everyone's interested to hear about Kasaka in San Diego. Right. Kasaka is doing well, and from my experience, she has been in shows which shows me a really good sign that she's willing to participate in her health care and all that because she has the responsibility still of matriarch so she's been showing really positive signs of pulling through this uh what would you say from well despite all that fake media stuff i keep seeing on the internet and in rumors um she looks like she's doing pretty well i haven't seen her in person but you know just like with tilly she's gonna have probably good days or bad days but for now she seems to be doing fairly well you know i wouldn't say she's perfect but you know she's still hanging on she's a fighter you know and just like tilly she was going to take care of take care of her as long as they can i mean shoot like she's in the best hands possible exactly can't argue that oh yeah and when i get back at some point I'll check on her that'd be good for all of you guys who are anxious to know about Kasaka and uh Kabuto's cap well we did not get to see that no because the Cute. cap is um less than a month old yes but I did talk to a few um trainers at uh Shamu Stadium I believe and or was it no it or was... the Oh, I'm sorry. What was it? Uh, one of the... It was Shameless Day, remember? Because the lady we were talking to down there. Uh, we had to just talk to a member, the educator down there. We talked to her. Yeah. And she said, yeah. So we're going to head over to Wild Art. She said, to see could I thought it was like... No, no, no. It was that lady. Remember the first one we met? That was that, um... Shameless Day, you be... Uh-uh. Oh, yes, it was. Okay, it was. Yeah, sorry. It was. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Score one for the co-host. But yes, <laughs> Kadoodle's calf will not be on exhibit for a while. She and um, the calf and the mother are going to be um, backstage for the main time, but you can still see Garfield if you go out there. We, of course, we saw him. <laughs> and yes, he's still as big as ever. Yes, he is very big. So, but yeah. No Kadoodle on the calf, but definitely plenty of Garfield. Yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting to see a big male walrus in a while. <laughs> I haven't seen big yes. male walrus. And maybe I've not seen Gadoodle. He's, I mean, I'm sorry, Garfield. He's about as big as they get. Next and to I Dozer. haven't, and I haven't seen a full-grown female walrus in a while. So it was cool to see. Well, you saw Slowpoke, Slowpoke and Gadoodle. Or you mean Garfield? I mean Slowpoke and Garfield. You know what I mean? It's like y'all know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's been happening, and. On to my Florida trip. Ooh, story time. So, this Florida trip has been a lot of fun. And as my co host can help me explain, we have been going to the zoo, SeaWorld. Uh, what zoo? Pacifics, well, boys, Pacifics. Tampa Lari Park Zoo. And SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. Orlando. And what's tomorrow's event on Monday? 
Busch Gardens, Tampa Bay. Right. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Tuesday we'll be seeing... Winter. Very, yes, winter. Hopefully. Hopefully. The, the weather pans out. We're going to check that out as well. So, tell them about your Life Park Zoo trip. I mean, how that went. Oh, yeah. On my trip to Larry Park Zoo, I got to feed a giraffe, which was pretty cool. Randall. Yes, that was pretty cool and fun. <laughs> and if you guys have not seen the pictures, wait, I haven't uploaded those to Zero Splash. His own, his own Facebook. Yeah, I've uploaded them to my own Facebook, but I will upload them to Zero Splash. <laughs> Eventually. So, if you look at that later, you'll see my reaction and my co-host reaction. Let's just say 18 inch tongues coming out at you. Don't do well for the host of the, um, the podcast. He Turns out he didn't like it. <laughs> well, he liked it, but just it threw him off guard. Yeah, it threw me off guard. Hey, it happened, you know? When something's 18 feet tall looking you in the eye, it can be a little intimidating. Yeah. And Randall is pretty tall. I can vouch for that. <laughs> I've seen him quite a lot of times. Yeah. And... Who have we run into? Oh yes, at Cyril Tampa fans. Larry Park Zoo. Wow, well, my Cyril fans, we we, we think, think, but it's a pretty strong hunch. But um, as some of you guys know, a certain bird of the aviary type that you, has been missing might have been found again. One that we've seen in, in shows, Blue Horizons, and who you thought was gone, but we think we found him, and what's his name again? Starts with a, what's that name again, uh, dear boy? Uh, Edgar? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we, we might have found Edgar, Ed, 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 Edgar, Edgar, excuse me, <laughs> Edgar, at Tampa Zari Park Zoo in the safari section. I know, that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, there's a young male, um, a uh, Maribu Stark, named Edgar, who's made it with uh, one of the females. And he came apparently to the zoo three months ago from, from Bush, Bush Gardens. From Bush Gardens. Which we're going to tomorrow. Yeah. So we don't actually know this is the same Edgar, but they say that this this stork is very friendly with people, comes right up. Not unlike the other marabous are kind of shy. They say that this Edgar is friendly, comes right up to her feeding. So yeah. We're assuming this is the same Edgar. Cause Especially since he's flown over people and flown over short... Or short fin Atlantic pilot whales. And dolphins, yeah. too. And it would make sense three months ago, you know, that he transferred over there and he's people friendly. And it looked like him from the size. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get a picture of it because he <laughs> didn't hit us until we were actually getting out the safari. But yeah. I'll go back and look again, but uh, we talked to some of the keepers there at the zoo and they said they don't actually know this is the same one. They just said all you know is he came from Bush Gardens. So, we we'll don't know if it's the same one. We'll talk to them tomorrow. If it's the same one, then hey, you know where Edgar is. I know, and you guys can visit him if it's the same one. Hopefully. If yeah. not, well... So we'll definitely check it out for you guys. Definitely. Now, on to the bigger news at SeaWorld Orlando. Tell me that experience, Joseph, your first time being in SeaWorld Orlando and seeing our Orca pod. Very different from San Diego's Orca Pod. That was pretty fun to see. And their dynamics are definitely different from San Diego's. As with every pod. And you had a, definitely a special moment with Katina, the matriarch, right? Yeah. For your, from your first got there. Yeah, when we got there, she was like right in front of the slide out. And then she came right over to the glass where I was standing and kind of made eye contact with me, which was pretty cool. There's a picture of that, by the way, on, um... Zero Splash. All right. Here's that one. And I did get, uh, pictures of the old. other pod, and... The old pod. Yeah. And do you get any pilot whale pictures? Uh, yeah, I did get okay. some pilot whale pictures. Yeah, we did. We did find the pilot whales. Um, they did not, they were not in UV of the show pool because <laughs> of, well... They, uh, they're in timeout. We're not going to go into too much detail about that. But let's they're... just say they're in a bit of a timeout. They were yeah. misbehaving, and let's just say, well, they've needed... it's been fixed, but... Yeah, they just needed to be in timeout. But the good news is we did see them. They're all doing well. They did a little training session. 
Um, they actually are, we're mostly in the shade pool where Tilikum used to yes. be all the time. Um, they are definitely grown a lot since I've last seen them. Not quite the size of Argo or Shadow, but definitely still growing giant bundles of joy. <laughs> yeah. Um, the pod seemed relatively okay with them at the moment. I, we did notice Katina did kind of bang at the gates. Yeah, kind of gave time. them the I'm the boss As scenario. But that's just Katina. She, that's just how she is. <laughs> and uh, also, we we did see, um, you know, Chura. He's growing yes. quite a lot. <laughs> he is growing big. He's, yeah, he's sprouting. And apparently he's still second place in size um, after Caleb. But personally, after we saw him, we still think he's the biggest. <laughs> yes. He's still very big and still growing and looking like his daddy and grandpa. Makayo, tell him about Makayo. <laughs> oh my gosh, Makayo on his ADHD. He's like, if you guys remember Taku, Taku was more of a oh, mama's, boy. mama's boy versus Makayo. Let's just say Taku was worse of being a mama's boy. So, yeah. There's a little comparison for you on Mikayo and Taku. Huh. Though Taku was a little bit more focused than Mikayo. Yeah. Mikayo's ADHD was predominantly during the show. He he seemed to find something shiny quite a lot and gone. So Yeah. He tried, but the other everyone else, you know, was all triple front flips. Katina was very high bowing. How about how about yesterday when they like split Katina Kayla and Trua, and then they like. That was just probably just for a yeah. second of the show. Like I said, they don't probably do that very often. Yeah. But I that didn't. was pretty cool though to see yes, them three together to for side, side by, by side. side. Um, I think it was just something new they were doing for the day. Um, I thought it was still pretty cool. I mean, it's good. You could see all the three big ones up all together at the same time, but I think it's just something different for the show. But it was still pretty cool though. Yeah. Definitely cool. And uh, who got you wet? Katina, surprisingly. I was expecting Trua or Kayla. Yep. Katina let you have that one. <laughs> yeah. See. And your thoughts are on Turtle Trek and Dolphin Days? Oh my gosh, Turtle else? Trek. That is an emotional experience. If you ever get a chance to see Turtle Trek, which I have taken everyone's advice to see Turtle Trek. It got very emotional. So yeah, Turtle Trek is definitely an emotional, very emotional uh, experience to see. Yeah, so Turtle Trek is definitely emotional. So if you ever get a chance to see Turtle Trek, check it out. And the young manatees there were very playful. Yes. <laughs> as we noticed. Uh, the big girls weren't really, you know, they were just bringing the eating. <laughs> the youngsters there were definitely having a good time. <laughs> and that is your first time seeing a manatee at Tampa Lark Rex Zoo and Sea World in, what, seven years? Something like that. Or longer? Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen manatees in person. So that was pretty cool to see main entities again. As my bro discovered, they're bigger in person than you think. Yeah. They are big. A little bit slow, but big. Let's see, how about Dolphin Days? What What were your thoughts on that? <laughs> I mean, the behaviors were good and everything, but, you know, the music was eh. I guess your bro was more looking, I guess he broke kind of likes how San Diego does their music. It's more whiny. I know. More lively. I know, you can like get more into San Diego's version of Dolphin Days. Yes, I mean, I do like the ending. Um, yeah. I like the same ending, but um, uh, yeah, it's not quite as um lively as San Diego. Nothing wrong with that. The dolphin behaviors were still good, and then I like how they did a little meet with the dolphin. Of course, they used Diego again. Yeah. But, eh, maybe a little bit more upbeat music, you know, some of the older, other ones. Yeah. <coughs> um, um, 
Dear old Orlando, if you're uh, listening to this, well, take our advice and kind of go with San Diego's music. I know every every park's different, but that's just our opinion. Yeah. So still yeah, a pretty good show. Orlando, but if still. you did listen out, just try to <clears throat> go with our advice. <laughs> kind of change up the music a bit. Yeah, the behavior segments are great. Just music, different choice would be. I mean, I know you're still trying to. It felt kind of still Key Westy Dolphin, Key West Dolphin Festus. Fest a little bit, but you know, yeah, a little more Hawaii, like like San Diego did, would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Although, I would love to see something like that. <clears throat> and on to uh, BC's highlights. Is there anything else that you want to talk about in your your experience at uh, SeaWorld? Anything else we missed? Nothing else I can think of. Just making sure. Just uh, oh, CJ. Oh yeah, CJ. CJ. Whoops, almost forgot about CJ. It's a forgot about CJ. <coughs> yeah, we did find CJ. And he is bigger than I thought, and the best way to identify him, besides his striped face, is his turn Fuchs. Yes, like Shukas. Yep. And, and like Argos. Mm-hmm. And, um... He wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't that interactive. We tried a little bit. Yeah, we did try. But, yeah. ooh! We did have a dolphin interaction. Dolphin nursery. Yep, dolphin nursery. We went by That's there. big. I it's like how... bigger. Yeah, I like how they redid it. And That's really cool. And individual windows, too. So yeah. And they're very interactive. Um, yes. We got um, Yar and some of the other younger um, dolphins come over. Yes. And we will uh, show those pictures later. Yeah. And we did get an interaction oh. with the dolphin. A dolphin interaction. Yes, yeah. we did with um, Roscoe or Rascal. Rascal. Rascal and Dexter. And Dexter. They were um, pretty fun. They were definitely fun. There's pictures of that of us getting totally soaked. Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> Felt really good actually. Yeah, and the in the photos here, you see me like this. Yes, he's freaking out. I'm sitting there, closing my eyes, and tomorrow. Er, hey, I kept my eyes open. I was like taking it. Yeah, I don't open my eyes on salt water. Yeah. I got, <laughs> I got salt water in my eyes, which, for those of you that don't know, that hurts. Well, I think they figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, a very fun trip and hopefully some more fun at Bush Gardens. Oh, yeah. He, he, he. And this will not be my only trip to Florida. Absolutely not. Because I can guarantee that there will be more. And eventually, I'll be out at San Diego. Which would be cool. And check out that zoo in SeaWorld uh, San Diego, and hopefully meet uh, Miss Corky and Kasaka and Ulysses and the rest of the pod, and catch up with my old buddy Ike. Yes, there you go. See, so there's plenty of adventures to come, and more episodes to fall. Oh, definitely. Now, on to Species Highlight. <laughs> Alright, now on to Species Highlight. Today's species highlight will not contain uh, dolphins or sharks because there are so many species and we don't want to go through all the species and the one specified. And the reason why we're not doing puffins seal, or seals is because we already highlighted this. In previous episodes. Yes. So, anyone who wants to highlight any species can send us species anything that is also not SeaWorld related. Or ocean related. We can do birds, like we can also do, you know, land animals. And not say we don't like SeaWorld animals, but you know, we can do some other least known ones or less popular ones. Yes. Shoot, even pandas, y'all get excited. <laughs> yes. So, today's species highlight is gonna be on mandrels and bat rays. So Sheldon, take it away. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Species Highlights. The part of the show where I explain to you about their species, its relatives, and where they come from. Sit back and enjoy. Good evening, and today we shall be discussing two very different species, the mandrill and the bat ray. Now, as some of you might know, there is one very famous mandrill. Uh, he's got a name. I totally forget his name. It's 
something very popular. He's in a very popular movie. He helps a very famous character. Well, what was his name? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, you, you, you in the green shirt right there. What's his name? Rafiki. Right. For those who don't know, Rafiki is a mandrill, not a baboon. Even though he looks like one, well, mandrills and baboons are with you know, close related cousins. However, the mandrill now obviously has a rainbow face, and most baboons don't have very much coloration on them at all. At on them at all, excuse me. <clears throat> now, mandrills, for the males especially, the more donned a mandrill is, the more brightly colored their face and their rump is. And in a mandrel group that can contain 20 to nearly over 250 members in the troop. And this troop can be split into different harems of about 20 of a single male and his harem of females and their young. And mandrels are from Africa. In the dense forest, they're critically endangered, believe it or not, because of habitat destruction and poaching for their bushmeat. If you ever see a mandrel or any type of monkey species, yawning at you, it's not because it's tired or relaxed, it's actually a threat display. By showing those big large canines, a mandrel or baboon is saying, hey look at these big teeth, you see these things? I can totally bite you with them, they're bigger than yours and I'm, I'm in charge here. These are my girls and my territory. And also the mandrel is the largest monkey in the world and is the largest old world monkey in the world. And when I say old world monkey, I mean, old world monkeys, they come from Africa and Asia. A new world monkey would come from South America. And most new world monkeys have prehensile tails, which means they can hold and grab things with their tails. And old world monkeys usually don't have prehensile tails. In the case of a mandrel, it's a very short, very short, short and stumpy tail. Not really used for much, anyway. The mandrel, being the largest monkey, can weigh over 150 pounds in the males. And is very good at running and climbing. It's a very varied, very diet of fruit, insects, and even small mammals if it can catch one or carry it. Now, on to the bat ray. Now, well, many, of us, many of us love stingrays, like the stingray touch or the manta rays or the cow nose rays you see at the touch pools at, at uh, SeaWorld. But our bat ray friend doesn't get much fame or glory, you could say. The bat ray is a Small to medium sized ray, about six feet long and can weigh over 200 pounds when fully grown. They get their bat, bat ray name from their dark coloration, wings, and their disc like shape. You can see those at Seaward Orlando, by the way, at the uh, touch pools over there, am I correct, uh, dear boy? Yes. I'm trying at San Diego. Of course, Orlando doesn't have any. Now, yes, they do have stingers, which are found in the base of the tail, and they are very fast. But one interesting thing about these guys is what they eat. Clams, mullets, small fish, they crunch them up with those with that mouth underneath the underneath their uh, ventral side. You can find these rays from as far north as Oregon to as far south as the Galapagos, and mostly around the Gulf of California. They promise they swim in groups of about a couple and be over five hundred sometimes. But usually smaller groups are found. They can be in shallow or open water, depending on the situation. And they give birth to pups, about 2 to 12, range in length of about, about a foot to almost 2 feet long, and about 2 pounds. And they're all born tail first, kind of like killer whales. And once they're born, just like stingrays and sharks, they are independent from mommy. They don't need her to spy. Once they're born, they're on their own. Of course, they have predators, like our, of course, the killer whale, <laughs> which would be more than happy to snack on one. If you're an offshore type, I'm sure you like a good tasty ray every now and then. They also are prey from sharks and other large fish and sea lions. California sea lions will prey on them and play with them and also eat them. It happens, yes, your cute, playful little sea lion is a predator. They do eat. <laughs> they are predators. And in most ray species, the females are going to be bigger than the males. That's pretty much the rule for all sharks and rays. Yes, sir. Just like I saw in the Devil Ray. Right. At Sierra right. Orlando. As we saw, oh, it was a Devil Ray, and you saw a Leopard Ray. Yes. Yes. 
And any, like I said, from a small little skate to a giant manta ray, the females tend to be bigger and heavier than the males. Same thing with sharks. The biggest sharks in the world are actually females. Especially for whale sharks and great whites. But that's another species highlight day. And now, let's see if you can guess this species highlight fact. True or false? The lesser devil ray has a stinger. The answer coming up at the end of this episode. Thank you, and have a whale of a day. Goodbye. And with that, we thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for topics, or want to share your SeaWorld stories, you can call or text our number 407-900-5309. Once again, the number is 407-900-5309. Or you can give us an email at SeaWorldSplashTeam at gmail.com. You can also give us that like on Facebook.com forward slash Splash Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Splash Podcast and on Instagram at Splash. Don't forget to check out our website www.SeaWorldSplash.com. For more fun on the action and to check out past episodes. And if you want to give any suggestions for species highlights, please don't feel. Don't be a burden. Yes, please don't be a burden. And feel free to give us any suggestions. And if you have any suggestions for pieces highlight or animals you want to highlight, please highlight. Please let us know. In an email at serialsplash team at gmail.com or by texting or calling our number 407-900-5309. And from all of us here on the Serial Splash team, we thank you for joining us and hope you join us for the next amazing podcast to come. Splash you later. Take care, guys. Oh, and did you get the, guess the right answer to the question? A devil ray, true or false, can sting you. The answer is false. Devil rays and manta rays do not have a stinger at all. They rely on their size and speed to escape predators. Thank you. And have a whale of a day, guys. Take care. Have a good night, and splash you later. Remember, if you want to share any of your favorite serial stories or memories, please call or text the Serial Splash Team, 407-900-5309. Once again, that number is 407-900-5309. Or email us at SerialSplashTeam at gmail.com. Thank you, and we'll splash you later. <laughs>